you know, I mean, I never lived a normal life. I mean, I'm not saying bad, but not normal. I studied at PSH University in the 80s. The university was closed by military orders, military orders several times, sometimes two months, sometimes three months, and I didn't graduate on time. I got a scholarship to study in the United States. I had to wait two months to get a permit from the Israeli University of And it wasn't a pleasant experience because I had to go every single day from morning to afternoon waiting to reach the window where the Israeli soldier is sitting to say to me, come back tomorrow. No approval yet. Without explaining, without saying whether tomorrow I'll get it or I will not, two months until I got it. When I came back, I got a job in Jerusalem. I lost my job because of the closure. Just before Oslo, Jerusalem was closed. And we had to go through checkpoints, and then we were asked to get permits, and then uh, we, we were able to get, uh, we were able to drive to Jerusalem, and then cars are not allowed, get a permit for the car, and then a decision, no cars. And then very, very selective Palestinians are allowed to Jerusalem. Post Oslo was even worse, because it was internal obstacles now, inside the West Bank. I mean, let alone we were separated from Gaza, of course. All of that because of settlements. And that's why Oslo divided the land into A area under the, the Palestinian Authority and then B joint Palestinians and Israelis and C the largest, as Andrew just mentioned, 62%, which is the settlements, where the settlements are, is 60% of the land. This is under Israeli control. Every single peace talk focus until now, if, I mean, now it stopped, but in 2013, the focus was the security of settlements. We have now 600,000 settlers reside in the West Bank, 250 or 250 in Jerusalem, fragmenting the land further. Jews are allowed to use roads that we are not allowed to use. The roads, of course, quicker, more developed, hours dangerous, longer hours, you could be stopped and held at a checkpoint for hours. It, it's, it's not a normal life. But my basic human rights were revoked and denied. And not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about myself. Maybe my situation is even better than other Palestinians. I mean, there are Palestinians who suffer even more in marginalized areas and in the villages and very close to, to settlements. The settlers is turning, are turning the Palestinian, Palestinian lives into a nightmare. They control natural resources. As a matter of fact, settlers, the Israelis in general, consume six times water used by Palestinians. And if you take a, a, just a, a short tour uh, in the West Bank, you will see. You will see the developed areas of the settlers. You will see the improvised areas of Palestinians. And you know what? Yesterday, Beit Selim, a very respectable uh, human rights organization, this is what they stated yesterday. Area C is being annexed de facto. Yes, the, there is some pressure uh, from the US. You know what the US always pressure is, how, is, how the US pressures uh, Israel? Freeze settlements. I never heard dismantle settlements. Only free settlement. During peace talks, settlements building continue. Every aspect of Palestinian life is regulated and under, under restriction. To the extent even love is regulated. You know love is out of your hands. I, I'm sure you know that. Or you plan it. <laughs> How is that? Nowadays, if a, a West Banker falls in love with a person from Jerusalem, as my sister did, and married to a person from Jerusalem, then life is not easy. I mean, she has to get a permit to live with her husband in Jerusalem. If they go visit, because she has a permit now, if, she, if they decide to go to Jerusalem to visit family, because his parents live in Jerusalem, at the checkpoint, she's not allowed to stay in the car. 
she will have to get out of the car, go through that checkpoint, which might take an hour, two hours, doesn't matter. And then her husband meets her after the checkpoint. If she was denied permit, then she will not be able to live with her family. Her husband will not be able to move to the West Bank to live with her because his ID will be confiscated. Because this is what is called by the Israeli law, center of life. He would have to, to prove center of life. And they come and check and inspect, inspect. They open the fridge. They see if they cooked today or not. They see if there is milk for the children. They check and see if, if you, if you uh, live there. If you don't, they confiscate the ID. This is the kind of life. This is why BDS is important for Palestinians. I mean, what do, what, what do we need to do with a state where everything is checked and controlled by the, the occupier? We've tried this in, in Oslo agreement. I mean, I, I disagree with that, but I've seen Palestinians giving flowers to the Israeli soldiers. To that extent, they were optimistic. To that extent. And then what happened? The land fragmented more. We are, we are stopped at checkpoints even more. We, I don't see my friends in Gaza. I don't see my friends in Jerusalem. It's hard to travel from Ramallah to the north because, because of the roads. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I support BDS, because it talks about rights, about universal rights. As a matter of fact, we have tried peace talks. Peace talks, the, the security of the settlers always overshadowed peace talks. And you know, you hear sometimes in, in, uh, in agreements, especially the Oslo agreement and the following agreements, this redeployment. What does redeployment mean? It means we need an Israeli, this is what the Israelis say, we need an Israeli presence in area C where the settlements are. In Hebron, the old city of Hebron, 800 settlers. 800 settlers have free movement and on the other side were Palestinians, 135,000 Palestinians, they restrict their movement because of the 800 settlers. And that's why we have, during Y River Agreement and Hebron Protocol, the redeployment HA, H2. And the presence of the Israelis in this small part of Hebron is affecting, by the way, Hebron is the largest city in, in the West Bank, is affecting directly those 135 Palestinians and the 150,000 Palestinians in Hebron. When they want to celebrate, if there is any uh, religious uh, occasion, Hebron people are under curfew and not allowed. There is a street called Shaya Shwada, you can Google it and look. Uh, and, uh, actually, uh, later on, they are not allowed to use it, period, Palestinians. That's it. They have to go around, long, long way, even to, to pray in Al-Haram al-Ibrahimi, the Ibrahimi mosque. So, it's, it, it, this settler colonial logic, logic should be addressed. I mean, we have hundreds, hundreds of human rights reports, hundreds of UN resolutions. But, I mean, Israel always violates them, always, uh, with uh, granted impunity, of course, uh, from the international community at the same time. So we need an action to, I mean, during the peace talks, let me, I, I'd like to read you a quote from Peace Now. And this was during the talks uh, in, uh, that started with uh, uh, State Secretary Kerry uh, in 2013. Here's what Peace Now stated. It is official. The Netanyahu government is committed only to one thing, building settlement. It shows the lack of commitment to the negotiations and other issues like the housing shortage in, inside Israel. The state has focused the resources on construction beyond the green line. It's even affecting Israel itself. 
And this now, by the way, although it's a peace movement and they monitor, but they are very, very pro-Israeli and they work for Israel. But the increase of settlement according to peace now from to 123% during the talks. So, I mean, peace talks is not bringing peace. And it's not about peace, it's about change. change. It's about universal human rights that apply to all. And that's why, if, if you are for a normal life for Palestinians, if you believe in universal uh, human rights, I think you need to vote yes in this campaign. Thank you very much.